morning. Uh, my name is Carolina Garcia, and I, here I will basically would like to share with you the experience of what was to develop during my PhD and integrated people-centered early warning systems. So basically, to share something about the applying science into reality. My study area was in the north of Italy, called the uh, Comita Montana Valtellina di Tirano, which is an area continuously affected by landslides and flooding. And then when I arrived, they told me, OK, your objective is to develop a methodology for applying early warning systems to the emergency plans. And you should use social surveys and quantitative risk assessment. But then we will have several constraints, which I bet you have been having along your research and any kind of project you implement. We had no budget for instrumentation. We will have restricted time frame, multiple cases of information, a strong interaction with the community, should be focused on prevention and building resilience, and with a multidisciplinary approach. So, okay, what are we going to do? When we have this multidisciplinary approach, one of the first things you find is that you basically have contrasting approaches, use different language and definitions. From the beginning, for the basic concept of the research, which is the early warning system, we have two main approaches, which is the traditional and technical early warning system, which is basically focused on the hazard and the warning. Then we have the instrumentation, we will give us, can give us a perfect warning, a perfect forecasting. But then what happened, thanks to the lack of population participation, many times there is a lack of risk awareness and preparedness, and basically the people don't know what to do, how to react. Then we have the other approach, the community-based early warning system, which is focused on the vulnerability and the reaction. Then what happened with this? It has been effective and efficient in small communities with low governmental and scientific presence. But then we ask ourselves, is this feasible in big cities, in communities with high reliance on the state? What, hap what happens with the efficiency and the monitoring and the forecasting? Then we propose, okay, we need an integrated people-centered early warning system. We need to combine everything. We need several actors. We need the scientists, the authorities, the practitioners, and the people at risk. And we need a constant feedback. So in order to develop our, methodolo our methodology, we analyze the early warning system models, which are mainly from the scientific community. And we also analyze the risk management methodologies from the international organizations with a lot of experience in the practice. Then we develop what we call a methodology for implementing integrated early warning systems. So whenever we start with the first part, which is the assessment, we say that, okay, the methodology has to be flexible and sustainable. And all this in the theory is great. But then we start to analyze every component. And we find what is the science versus the reality. We found that the maps, the regulatory maps that we have to work with, will have several problems since they were the subjective application of standards. Basically, each technician of each community developed different maps, even if they will have the same characteristics geological, geologically and geomorphologically. Then that means the maps are biased. They are not rigorous. But we have to use them because that's a law. Then we found that the forecasting is excellent. They have regional homogeneous zones and regional rifle thresholds. The problem is that the area is full of strong micro, microclimate variations. So what happened with this? With the monitoring, they are monitoring just the big active landslides, but most of the landslides are small, and it's not possible to instrumentally monitoring all of them. Then we say that according to the law, the, risk, the major is responsible for risk communication and preparedness for the population. But in the reality, no preparedness activities, no communication campaign have ever been developed. Then again, we found an excellent emergency response tool developed with the high technology, with dynamic GIS, decision super systems, and information and communication technology. But then what happened with this, that the database of this tool depends on the continuous updating performed by the authorities. So if they don't do it, Basically, the tool is not useful. Okay, then we say for the implementation, what do we have to do? What do we propose as scientists 
to improve the current situation. So we say, first, we have to work with the local authorities to update this tool. Then we have to produce high-quality scientific products, both for hazards, the modeling, with risk estimation, with analysis of vulnerability, using both the information that is av available in the census and the qualitative vulnerability that we developed during the research. And then we have to translate all this information so the local authorities and the population can use them. But this is a long-term change. So we ask ourselves, what can we do now to increase the effectiveness of the early warning systems? We have to involve the local community and many other actors. So how do we do? First, we have to know them. We have to understand the root causes of vulnerability and the risk perception. So we do this through interviews, which, for example, they gave us several interesting analyses which say that the people of the community would used to work as a local small vineyards, but due to the changes of socio-economical uh, situation, there is a strong environmental degradation because they basically abandoned the small vineyards, and that causes that the channels are neglected, which translated into amazing mass movements. Again, we keep doing this analysis of the population and we apply a comprehensive survey to understand the levels of risk perception, preparedness, etc. We found out that even if most of the population knows about the risk they face, they have a really low level of risk perception and low to moderate level of preparedness. So we ask ourselves how to increase the response capability by improving the preparedness and resilience with education. But then, how do we do it? Is the population willing to participate? So we ask the population. We also ask them, what do you want to know? What's important for you to know? Based on that, and analyzing what has been done in the area, to support and collaborate with the current initiative, because the most important part is not to repeat, but to share a link. So we developed several education activities with local institutes, like local partnership. We also developed some new initiatives trying to use a universal language and visually friendly. So we designed risk communication campaigns, like using integral websites, using updated scientific results in order to communicate. We focus all this work in the school initially because we think that kids of the school, they are great communicators. So at the end, what we found out that after all this work, we just basically address some few items of the methodology we propose. And why is that? Because we as scientists, we can't do all the work. We need to work with the practitioners, we need to work with the local stakeholders, the local community, because that's the only way to really implement something as complex as the early warning system and to assure the sustainability. So to conclude, it's easy to say, okay, early warning system is extremely complex and dynamic, but why is that? It's because to develop an effective early warning system, first, it's not necessarily to create new standardized systems, but to connect the already existing initiatives with an interdisciplinary, participative, and multi-hazard approach. To integrate a, an early warning system is not an individual task, but is the result of combining the efforts of all the stakeholders the governments, the scientists, the practitioners, and the local communities. It, they have to step up to the challenge of working together and lead all the efforts for, to achieve an effective disaster risk reduction. Thank you very much.